And finally, we have the... We have no idea how to specifically define these artists and albums section. Starting with the Desaturating Seven, the newest album from Primus. Um, so yeah, if you know Primus... It's about goblins. Yes. Uh, it's a concept album about seven goblins hunting a rainbow. And, oh god... I think at the end of the story, they end up destroyed by their folly or something like that. Uh, it's a weird concept album. I mean, if you know Primus, you expect weirdness. But this is actually more mundane for them, at least musically speaking. Lyrically, it is still very much a Primus album. Yeah, I mean, I've was, been I was kind of bigged up. I haven't really listened to much Primus, but... Because of what I have heard and what I've heard from other people, like I expect it to be much weirder musically, but it's relatively prog rocky. Yeah. A little bit weirdness here and there, but the, the lyrics definitely are just huh? Goblins? Goblins? <laughs> Goblin vomit? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Instead of in the image putting the album cover, should I just put Alex Jones? <laughs> Turn the freaking frogs gay. Oh God. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Um, yeah, this is much more normal compared to most of Primus's stuff. Like, if you consider Mr. Crinkle, that is just a weird song, musically, lyrically, and if you watch the video, it's one of those, what the fuck am I watching? Um, this album feels... It reminds me of two things. The first thing it reminds me of on some of the songs is Spinal Tap. <laughs> yeah, could hear that bit there. Specifically with the opening song, I was half imagining it to start going, no one knew who they were or what they were doing, and just go into Stonehenge. Yeah, obviously they kind of dialogue at the start. It does make me think kind of like uh, Devin Townsend a little bit as well. Yeah, I can... There's a little bit of uh, Zeltoid themes here and there. Yeah, I think they're kind of contemporary with each other, so... Um, there's a particular Danny Elfman film, or... I can imagine Danny Elfman and Primus working well together. Yeah, but... Um... One go, one go, and Primus team up when <laughs> unfortunately that's that i can say for a fact that that's never going to happen because danny elfman has had to retire from live performances they could do a like they could do a long live i guess i guess but would there really be any point if it wasn't live yeah true we're looking at some kind of weird oingo primus musical featuring Devin Townsend. <laughs> give it to me um Oh, I'm trying... I can't remember the name of it. It's sort of like Welcome to the Dark World or something like that. Not overly familiar with Danny Elfman, unfortunately. It's one of the artists I wanted to get into, but haven't. So, let's say Primus, I Oh, God. Also, I must admit, this is the second time I've seen an album where every single title of the song starts with the other being an album by The Haunted. Yeah. Although, at least in this case, it does make sense because they are the chapters of the story. So you can imagine it being chapter one, the valley, chapter two, the seven, chapter three. What if I just chapter seven, the ends? Question mark? Um, I just realised I forgot to bring up my notes. It's kind of hard to write notes about something like this anyway, I'd say, because, well, it's a book, totally. Yeah. yeah welcome to our, our book review in musical form. <laughs> I definitely want to see if I can get a hold of the book. The one problem is, I think it's Dutch. Danish or Dutch, something like that. Um, yeah. yeah, background and composition. The Desaturating Seven is a concept album based on the children's book The Rainbow Goblins, written by Italian author of children's books Ulderico. Okay. Band leader Les Claypool used to read the book to his children when they were younger and was fascinated and inspired by the book's vibrant artwork and use of colours. Funny that! That's why I'm seeing links to Les Claypool stuff mm. when talking about this. Or looking at this. Yeah. There's quite a lot of it around. Well, I was meaning funny that a book about rainbow goblins has vibrant artwork and use of colours. 
Because we've been talking about colour as well. Yeah. Um, Claypool always felt the book's story would make a fascinating musical project and eventually approached his fellow band members about recording original music based on the story of the book. This is the second Primus album based on a movie or book, the first being the 2014 album Primus and the Chocolate Factory with the Fungi Ensemble. Yeah. And it's their shortest full-length album to date. I actually have the Primus and the Chocolate Factory album. It actually turns the music kind of sinister and terrifying. And important to note, it's based on the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The good one. Come on, Heat, get me! Yeah, I didn't say before we start recording, actually, this is quite a short album, but... It... Yeah, if it's as short as they've done, then that boosts you. Mm. But it's one of those albums that it's very short, but that's not necessarily a problem for it. It's very kind of, it's got all the goodness you want compacted into a small space, I guess. Mm. It's a very competent album. Also, quite, it's supposed to get that kind of long, kind of winding progginess to it, despite being quite short as well, which is honestly quite impressive. Mm. The thing is, if it was any longer than it is, it would outstay its welcome. Hmm. You know, being just under 35 minutes actually works well for it. I would agree with that. <laughs> Funnily enough, the album has already been noted for being a stylistic change for Primus, exploring more traditional aspects of progressive rock than their previous releases. The influence of King Crimson, especially the album Discipline, is evident. Yeah, I can hear the King Crimson. I can hear the King Crimson in there, yeah. I mean, everyone's had King Crimson anyway, because it's King Crimson, of course you have. Especially if you have any idea about Pog what is, you probably heard King Crimson. You say that, but I do know people who haven't heard of King Crimson, and they do love prog rock, so... However, if you don't know King Crimson, you probably know one of the billions of bands related to them. <laughs> this is true, but yeah, I mean, not knowing King Crimson liking prog rock is like liking thrash metal and not knowing who Slayer are. Yeah, true. Well, not knowing who any of the big four are. Yeah, it's like, I like rock. Do you know who Guns N' Roses are? No. <laughs> what about ATDC? Or... <laughs> or, I like rock. Okay, do you know the Rolling Stones? Yeah, it seems... It's, they're basically... King Crimson are quintessential rock, rock I'd say. Mm. They may not be as mainstream as something like, say, Pink Floyd, but they're still pretty goddamn important to the genre. Mm. And better than Pink Floyd. Come at me! I don't think that many people would even disagree with you there. Yeah, but I want to see how many people attack me in the comments. You know, after that last stupid comment we got, accusing us of being holier than thou and condescending, is sort of like, fuck it, come at me, bro! The funny thing about that is like, oh, you're looking for an artist to hate, despite the fact that both of us mentioned during that one review that we actually like some man and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you actually expressly state about me being a fan. It's sort of like, um, wanting to hate? No! Yeah, enough about bitch fest. Let's get back to Primus. I want to talk more about goblins. <laughs> yes. Uh, as you say, it was very difficult to write up notes about this one. It's sort of like, ah, uh, okay, how do I explain a concept album that I've never heard of what it's based on? Um, I would also say, well, for me... I can hear the King Crimson, and I can also hear early Pink Floyd influences. Some of the very kind of earlier, more experimental stuff, yeah. Yeah, sort of Umma Gumma era, that sort of thing, which is stuff that I do like. But it's like, if early Pink Floyd formed a supergroup with Mr. Bungle? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, just until I think one track particularly stands out to me, though. Mm. That being the trick. I thought it kind of builds up and has like one bit in the middle of it. So... Yeah. I'd say of the longer songs, the trek definitely stands out. Um, of the shorter ones, the scheme really stands out. Mm. It's just got this very sort of jaunty. Da -da -da -dum, dum, dum, dum. The laughing and bass groove it's got is very nice. Yeah. I, I really like when it goes into this sort of. Um, Sort of jazz groove, almost. Yeah, the, the middle part of the album is very, very strong. Yeah. It doesn't sort of say it's bad in the other parts, and they're saying that it's kind of, it starts out good, gets better in the middle, and then goes back to being good again. So, which is, there's no 
bad part of this, I wouldn't say. Yeah, and as I say, the short length of the album actually helps it, because it does give the feel of a short story, whereas some albums, some concept albums might be a bit too long. This hits the sweet spot where it's just the right length to say everything it needs to. Um, I did actually look up stuff with regards to the book and um, the title of the album is in reference to the goblins themselves, each one named after the colours of the rainbow. It's not just that they're... Mm, I kind of got that influence from the, uh, the album. Yeah. On the cover. I think the cover is probably actually the illustration from the book. I think it is. Yeah. Um, I would say it also has a lot of oddly classical music influences in sort of structure. What does I say? Rock and metal came from classical origin. Well, rock and metal, rock and blues, but... Yeah, but sort of Edvard Grieg and Prokofiev influences seem to bleed through. Uh, it's also a very good album to just let yourself zone out to and just let it play with your mind. Just let your dreams be influenced by this bizarre story about these crazed goblins hunting a rainbow and then meeting their untimely end. So one thing I really like about the album is it's not one of those albums that ends exactly the same way it starts. A little kind of little guitar tune is exactly the same right at the very end as it is starts like kind of just complete the cycle. Mm. Love what happens to that. Yeah. Um overall what would you give it out of five? I'm thinking a solid four here. Four possibly a four point five? It's definitely a strong album. Yeah, I really wasn't sure what to really put it down as rating wise. All I could say with any degree of certainty is that it's not being given enough praise by the bigger professional raters. You know, it's been given three out of five and B rating and a C plus and things like that. And it's all like, motherfuckers, it's better than that. <laughs> you don't know good shit when you... Well, we're talking about people who gave Marilyn Manson a four out of five. So what, what do they know? This is the real shit. <laughs> Kind of ironic because that's a song by Marilyn Manson, so. <laughs> yeah. Move on. Yep. Good stuff. Yeah. Definitely check this album out. I will be trying to find the book because I'm intrigued as to what it will be like. I mean, just because it's a children's book doesn't mean it won't be a fun book to read. She can look at the illustrations. Yeah. Which is like quite an important part of this, anyway. So. Mm. But yeah. Definitely check this one out. Next! 